Okay, so we're going to be diving in and chatting about how to shift, okay? Where do you begin to shift from hobby level to your next level of business? But before we begin, I want to make sure that I take a moment and direct you to do two things, and that is drop a link to your best-selling product, okay? This is so, so important, I'll explain more at the end like I normally do, but I really want you to take a moment and drop your link to your best-selling product, okay? Um, and then on top of that, if you are selling physical products and you would like some resources for where you are in your business, definitely take the quiz. Um, that's mypathtoprofit.com. All right. So definitely want to let you know about those two things. I'll drop a link in the comments, but I know they get lost as we go along. Okay. So as I mentioned today, we're going to be discussing um, where to ship how to shift, where to begin when shifting <laughs> from hobby level to your next level of business, all right? So I'm Andrea Thomas, and what I do is I help you reach your next level of sales when you are selling physical products online so that you can exceed your goals and, of course, have profitable assets, all right? So with that, we're going to go ahead and dive in. This is probably where you are or where you're headed or where you just left, okay? And that is where you are, you saw upon a product, you created a product, or you decided that you're going to wholesale or drop ship or whatever and jump into this e-commerce game, right? And you may have thought that, hey, if you build it, people will come, and that didn't quite happen, <laughs> but you figured out a rhythm, right? And so now sales are trickling in, they're becoming more consistent, um, and you're like, hey, I'm kind of liking this. If you're a mom, this mom life or working nine to five, and then I have my other side thing going, and I could take this to the next level, but this is kind of a comfortable spot because it's predictable and I know what to expect, and I don't know if I want this to be a thing, okay? That could be where some of you are. On the other hand, you could be thinking, you know what? I really want to grow this thing. I really want to scale this thing, but I'm just not quite sure how to do it, and better yet, how will it impact my family? How will it impact um, what all the other things that I have going on? So we're going to talk about that for the next few minutes so that I can give you some clear steps on how to do so, okay? So when you are hopping on, let me know if you are a um, within a direct selling company, if you are a wholesaler, if you make your own products. Like, I just want to kind of get to know you so I know how to tailor this talk as we go through, okay? Now, um, as mentioned, you are at a place where you're like, hey, this is bringing in some great um, shoe money, purse money, um, back to school money for the kids. And, but what you're really wanting maybe deep down is, you know what, I want this to be my vacation money where I take the family, go to Disney World, go to Italy, whatever we want there, or this becomes my um, full-time income. And I'm able to bring in 100,000 plus a year outside of <laughs> the actual sales. This is actually your take home pay. Um, and then grow it, of course, and to be a national, international brand. And so there's some shifts that are gonna be taking place where you're thinking, how is this gonna impact my life? Um, do I really want to take, the, take this next level? And what are some things that are involved? And so I wanted to, to, to say first, congratulations, because you have found a winner. Your products are selling. You may have some inconsistent days still yet, but things are moving in the right direction. So congratulations on that. Um, now, one of the things that we want to take a look at is what's working. So if you're, depending on your business model, if you um, are wholesaling, um, you're able to quickly see what's working, okay? So whether it is you're selling skirts and you're selling shoes and accessories, you can see what's actually selling the fastest, okay? You can also take a gauge on um, how your social media presence is growing, how your community, community is growing, um, how engaged they are. Because one of the things we wanna make sure that we are maximizing before we ever think about scaling is have we maximize where we are currently. And so what I mean by that is um, before you say, hey, I sold four products and now I'm going to go ahead and order a thousand because this is a winning product. We want to take a moment and slow down just a little bit and say, you know what? How many people are coming to my website each day? Okay. How many people are then purchasing? What's my conversion rate look like? And so for example, that is where we have a hundred people coming to our website a day. 
and three people are purchasing. Okay, so we have a 3% conversion rate. And so that lets me know that, hey, in order to actually grow my business, I'm gonna need a um, 1,000 people to come to my website and 30 people to purchase a day type thing. And so you can begin to look at, okay, what are my trends? What are my trends saying with my inventory? Um, how quickly is it moving? Um, how quickly can I get more inventory in? Because the last thing I'm gonna do is be sold out for days and years um, because we just couldn't get it back in stock in time. And so all those people that are waiting for that product um, end up moving on because it's not available. And so we're starting to look at trends. What, how many people are coming to our website? How many people are purchasing? How quickly are products moving? Which products are moving? And that's starting to build your portfolio of how to shift. You also want to look at the, um, the aspect of, okay, I am private labeling or I'm wholesaling and I'm moving, let's say, 100, 100 units a month. Okay, you're moving 100 units a month. And so they're giving you a price based on how much you're purchasing. So you may be thinking, you know what? What does it look like if I want to purchase 1,000 units instead of 100 units at one time? How much more will my price go down? So remember, this is, all, this is really all science in a sense, and it's also psychology as well. We wanna make sure that we are setting ourselves up for profit, the most profit from, from the start. So if you are making your own products, how is your pricing going? And this is going to be a lot of information in a short span of time. So if you have any questions, definitely make sure that you drop them in the comments. And I'll be sure to circle back, answer any questions and so on in case I miss them as they're moving, okay? So we want to look at the, the pricing setup. What's your, what's, your, what's your product selling model, okay? So if you're wholesaling, um, are you going 2x more than the, the cost of product to you? Are you going 10x? more and that's gonna let you know what kind of profit you're going to get and we want to do that based on where we are now in business okay or where you are when you started um, because as you order more your price should go down for your cost therefore adding more profit to your bottom line okay so um, I want to go back just recap really quickly okay how is the traffic to your website what's your conversion rate what does it look like if you want to scale there, okay? Then, on top of that, um, what's your selling model? Um, how are you getting products in? How quickly is it moving? And then your pricing setup. This is going to really let you know, okay, if I have a $25 product and it is selling like hotcakes, am I really making profit off of it, okay? So I had a, I had a client, um, a prospective client, come to me and she was like, hey, I really think I have this great selling product, it's doing amazing, um, and I'm selling like 600 units a month. And so I'm like, okay, this is awesome, this is good. So we go through her pricing and she's only making a dollar profit. It's a $10 product and she's making a dollar profit. So basically, she sold 600 units to make $600 profit each month okay now no, sorry that's not being profit that's just that's just um yes profit minus the expenses minus um paying her paying for the cost of replenishing that that stock so she was only left with a dollar okay now when we looked at her pricing strategy we realized it was just it was off so she was leaving another three to four dollars on the table um so instead of uh, working harder she could take that same product and now instead of making $600, she could be making $2,400 just from that simple tweak, okay? So we wanna make sure that you are maximizing where you currently are before you shift to try to scale. Because imagine if she would have scaled where she was, um, how much more would she have to do to create $100,000 in sales? How much more would she have to create to bring home to herself $100,000, making only a dollar of profit, okay? and then then we want to look at the um, look at your community. Your community is so 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 important because they're letting you know what they love, what they hate, what they'll buy again and again. What's a special occasion purchase? They'll also let you know what you aren't carrying. And so by having a conversation with your community, an ongoing conversation, you're really able to tap into. Hmm, maybe I don't need to buy um, more accessories this round. Maybe I need to focus more on shoes because those are moving. I'm talking to my community and they're really excited about this pump that's coming out and so on and so forth. So let me pause on what I think is best for them and let me focus on what's best, what they know is best for them, okay? So that's why we want to really keep pouring into the community, all right? And just having that conversation with them. 
Now this is all about my, um, this is all for my ultimate e-com trifecta. And so within that, we have three areas that we work on. The website, making sure that you're always driving traffic to your website. Making sure that you have a community, of course, where you're gonna be talking to them and building that community and growing it and making raving fans out of it. And then <clears throat> maximizing third party platforms. Whether that's gonna be selling on someone else's platform or positioning your product as the go-to brand, okay? So when you look at those three foundational pieces, where are you? what's going on in each of those areas for where you are hobby wise and so i say hobby wise because typically when you think about a business that's hobby you're just kind of um you're moving at a pace without true urgency okay it's something that you love to do it's something that you like to do and when you get to it you do and when you don't you don't but it's making good it's making good sales okay something to make you want to get up and do again or or you love your product so much that you don't mind working and breaking even um, because it's a passion project, all right? So where we're, taking, we're taking that and we're shifting it to, okay, this is something that I actually want to build upon and I want to grow this thing to where it's making hundreds of thousands of dollars in a year, my family's able to live off of it, and the business is going to be healthy, growing, thriving as we build this brand, okay? Now, so we have gotten some of the foundational pieces. Now, of course, there's more to the puzzle, but these, this is, this is the foundational items. So take a moment. I want to make sure that you are dropping a link to your best-selling product. And if you haven't already, take a moment and go to the, um, take the quiz. That's going to give you a resource for where you are in your business. That's my path to profit. All right. Now, along with that, you would say, you know what? I've maximized my website. I'm actually not even doing 3% conversion rate like the average. No, no, no. I'm at a good 9% or a 10%. Or if you have funnels in place, you are maybe at 20% conversion rate. So where you're saying, hey, those same 100 people that come to my website every day, I'm now getting 20 sales. I mean, I'm getting nine sales. I'm really focused on maximizing that, okay? And then my visitors, my visitors come, you know, what about those other 80 people, those other 97 people that just kind of hopped on, perused, and left? Were you able to get their information, to connect with them when they're not on your website, okay? That could be through a Facebook pixel, that could be through email, that could be through text messages, that could be through any avenue to where they're actually your asset and you get to talk to them whenever you want. Now I say your asset for a reason, okay? Because many of us have Facebook groups or we have Instagram followings, but those aren't really our people. Because should Facebook do an update and you can't really refresh the page and start moving it, um, should Instagram go down for a day or whatever, you have no access to your people. So I'm very, very, very keen on letting my students, letting my clients know that you have to have your own community outside of social media that you can connect with whenever you want, okay? So you've done that with your, with your website. Look at your traffic, the types of traffic. You're also nurturing them, right? You're talking to them, email, text message within your Facebook, and you're letting them know you listen to their concerns, you're letting them know about upcoming um, uh, sales, upcoming products coming down the pipeline. You're getting pre-orders. You're doing all the things right. And, and on top of that, you have decided, you know what? I'm going to be selling on Etsy or Amazon, or I'm going to be doing podcast interviews and pitching to magazines or getting on television, whatever the case may be. You feel like, I'm in the zone. <laughs> I'm in the zone and everything is working to where what whatever I currently have in place, okay? So let's say your following is um you have about hmm, 100 orders a month. I think I mentioned that earlier. 100 orders a month and you have a good following and engaged following on social media, email, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so now you're like, you know what? I have my rhythm. How do I scale? Where how do I know how to take this where do I begin to make that shift, okay? This is so, so, so important because this is where companies um, can tend to crash and burn, okay? One, one, um, remember my trifecta. The trifecta is so, so, so important. So um, if you could just look at a triangle, okay? The top of the triangle is your community, all right? This is, this is what's 
This is the main thing that you are funneling people in all the time. The other two points, where my fingers are, these other two points are your website, that's your domain, your piece of the internet, where you're, you're, you're transaction, making transactions, okay? And then the other side is third-party platforms. This is the beauty of the trifecta. You are always positioning yourself, your brand, your products as the go-to on other people's platforms to get in front of their audience to drive people where? Into your community, okay? Now, when they're in your community, you can take them wherever you want to go, whether that's your website, your Facebook group, where your email address, you want some upcoming local event um, for, for a trade show, or um, you're going to be speaking somewhere, you always have access because you're pouring like-minded people into your um, your community, your tribe, your whatever you want to call it, okay? Now, when we do that, sometimes when we shift and we're ready to scale, we say, okay, you know what? I've been selling 100 units a month. It's growing to 120, it's growing to 150. I want to take a leap. I want to take a leap and I want to just invest in 1,000 um, units of product and this is where people get cash flow funny. <laughs> this is where people get overwhelmed because they did not take the time to make sure their processes were in place, to make sure their cash flow was right, and to heavily invest in your community, okay? To heavily invest in your community because once those 1,000 units arrive, once you get done making them or your team makes them or it comes in from overseas, um, what we don't want is it for it to sit on the shelf month after month after month, and we're still selling 150, 250 units and things of that nature. No, 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 no. We want these things to fly off the shelves because the longer they sit on your shelves, your, your virtual shelves, if you're not, if you're letting someone else ship on your behalf, the more it eats into your profit, okay? The more it eats into your profit. And so when those sales are coming in, you're, you may not see the direct correlation between it, but you have money tied up in that inventory if you carry your own, own products, okay? And you are want to make sure that these things are going to make you profit as quickly as possible. And so the best way to do that is to definitely heavily focus on your, um, your community, okay? Heavily focus on that other point, which is third-party platforms and getting in front of other people. Because all of this is going to drive people to, on this side, your website to make a sale. Now, why did I have you all drop your favorite seller, your best seller, um, best selling product on this thread? Is because when we drop, when we tell people to go to a specific location to find or purchase a particular product, when people click on that, they're not in perusing mode. They're not in browsing mode. They are in purchase mode. They have a few questions they want to get answered. And they want to know, is the price going to be good? Is the shipping going to be fast? Um, and do I actually like it? Will it fit me? Is it going to work for me? And then when they get those questions answered, they will make a purchase or they will go and they will cross compare with someone else and they may come back, okay? But when you send someone to your homepage, and this is such a side note, but this is, this is imperative. When you send someone to your homepage, um, they're in browsing mode. They're wondering, hmm, I wonder what they have. Um, oh, a pop-up came up for a 20% off coupon. Key, that's good. <laughs> but they're not necessarily in purchase mode, okay? So this is how you can begin to test. You know, have you heard of A-B split testing? This is where you're able to test, you know, what people are wanting um, to do. They come to your website mostly and, and go, through, go to the actual product and purchase, or do they prefer to go to your homepage and do the 20% off coupon and then you upsell them or you sell them through your email to purchase, okay? Either way, you have to have a reason, a flow of what you want your customer to do, okay? Now, that's a total side note. <laughs> Back to scaling, okay? So you have figured out that, hey, I'm ready to, and I have the cash flow, I'm ready to invest, and if you don't have the cash flow, we'll talk about that in a second, but I'm ready to invest in my next level of inventory. But how is this going to affect my home life? Because before, I am, per I am packing and shipping myself, or, um, you know, I don't really spend a lot of time investing in um, 
community per se. I do ads, things of that nature. So what are going to be, what are things that are going to be in place or how are things going to change lifestyle wise? And so there's definitely some things that you want to consider because when we are treating our business as a, um, as a hobby level, which is, you know, I am, I get to it when I get to it. I don't when I don't. If I get a sale today, I, that's awesome. If I don't, it doesn't really hurt me too much. When we become intentional and treat it like a true business that we want to grow and expand upon, um, our, another part of our brain just pops on. Like, okay, how can I grow this? How can I get this seen? And that brings up a few questions. That brings up a few questions. So if you want to move inventory quickly, what are some things that you can do? Okay, so here's a list. Here's a list. We can wholesale. We can drop ship for others. We can um, get seen, have the product seen on celebrities or influencers. We can do brand influencer programs. Um, we can do a whole plethora of items, but it goes back to this one thing. This is the question. What is your ultimate goal, okay? So when I started my company, Scratch Me Not, I had a goal in mind, and that was to make sure that my product gets on as many children that scratch, thumb suck, or hair pull as much as possible, okay? I My goal was mission-minded, and so I work with those who are all about making sure that their end goal mission is accomplished. Well, I knew for sure that if I did not treat my business as a business and I more treated, treated it more casually like a hobby, um, that there were going to be some children that could not get their hands on my product. So I started with the end in mind and I made sure that I moved accordingly. Now, of course, there are some pitfalls and there are some things that I definitely help my clients avoid. But for the most part, it's really about being strategic on how we want our customers to get our product because they, our, they their lives can't change if the product is still on the shelf, if they don't even know it exists. So that's why I go back to the trifecta, all right? Now, I wanna make sure if there's any questions. Let me look over here and see. Make sure that you drop a link to your best-selling product because I definitely wanna see it. And others may benefit from it as well. And, no, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay, so now we're going to um, other things. When you're ready to scale, I always talk to, to um, people about working with people organically first, looking for your customers organically first before you shift to Facebook ads because you can always use ads, um, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, 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 ads. Um, but until you understand your customer, how they think, how they function, um, and you start to do um, a B split testing of you know what what um, creative or what photo what imagery do they click on most and things of that nature you're gonna end up spending a lot of money time and and frustration <laughs> um, focusing on ads unless this is your, your only way that you want to um, bring in community bring in people to purchase your product so if you are a drop shipper typically people that drop ship they're they're heavily focused on ads because one they have a shorter much smaller um, profit margin okay if you've noticed if you do print on demand if you drop ship I'm um, using Alibaba Express things of that nature your um, your profit margins are much slimmer and so um, so we want to move that product to one as quickly as possible to make sure that we can get the profit that we want the sales that we want hit our numbers but then also when we're doing so we don't have a lot of time because time is money and so people will spend time becoming a mastery or hire someone else to do Facebook ads now if you are not in um, if you're not a drop shipper um, and you are all about um, community and and your wholesaling and private label and things of that nature, I definitely suggest going the organic route because this is where you're gonna really spend time talking to people. You may not necessarily be incognito, which means you have a faceless brand. You wanna be kind of like the, um, the face of the brand. You wanna have someone front and center, okay? So this is where I say focus on organic approaches because you get to understand how your customer thinks, functions, and navigates through the internet, okay? Um, and then, of course, we want to talk about, I just lost my train of thought. Ah, got it, okay. 
<laughs> I get so excited about this. This is so this is so fun for me um, to help somebody go from you know making ten thousand a year in sales to ten thousand a month in sales. It's a stark difference. Um, and so we want to have some definite some key items in place. So definitely looking at the um, you know do you need to add more products to the table? Do you need to shift how you're selling your products? Okay, pricing wise. Um, you know are you going to be wholesaling and private labeling? Um, what are what do you want to do? Some people start off and they are all about just getting a product on Amazon, um, doing retail arbitrage, which is finding all the different sales and going to Walmart and going to places and then putting those things on Walmart and then making good money that way. And that is more like that's brandless. It's just where you're putting things on Amazon to sell it as fast as possible. Other people are truly trying to create a brand. And when you're trying to create a brand, um, and you're not drop shipping and you want to create an audience that is engaged with you. So when you say I have a new product coming out, the masses come out and you're sold out before you even um, you even get the product in. OK, so those are things that we want to implement by going the organic route, understanding where do your people live on the Internet? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? These are questions to begin to ask um, as you're ready to scale. OK. Now, along with that, along with that, and this is more of the more of the fun side, okay? More of the fun side. Um, along with that, we want to see um, what makes your people excited, okay? What makes your people excited? So that when you get a pitch for a podcast, when you get um, a pitch, um, someone says, "Hey, come on my show," um, you know, go and be a do a Forbes article, things of that nature. You know what pain points to talk about and you know what end results to discuss with them, okay? With your products. So there's numbers in place when it comes to scaling. There are um, product models to consider. You know, do you wanna do a hybrid? Sometimes because products have a, um, some products have a low profit threshold, they, we want to add a product, like a digital product that is pure profit to help elevate our brand, okay? So sometimes it's not even a matter of adding another physical product. Sometimes it's a matter of adding a digital product that will be effortless for you, okay? So these are things that you, that you can consider as you are shifting from hobby to, to your next level of business, okay? So that's what I wanted to really discuss with you all was just to get the, your brain moving in a, in a fun new direction of I wonder what it would be like if I wonder what it would be like if um, I took this business from 10 20,000 a year in sales to 5 10 20,000 a month in sales because that is where some of the magic happens and we're able to really understand how to make our brand global okay now you notice i've been using the words brand i've been i've been shifting from saying selling your products and this is why okay when we do this properly when we put the time and effort in to not only build um to sell products but build a brand we're able to profit outside of the products themselves okay this is such amazing, an amazing thing because when you have an engaged community, when you are um, constantly letting your product be the expert, the go-to um, product for that solution or for that problem, uh, for that problem, that solution, <laughs> then you're able to position your brand to be seen and collaborate with other brands, okay? Now, you heard me, talk, heard me talking about the brand influencer program. This is something that pe people overlook is where, you know, we're so focused on getting a, an influencer to, to wear our product, to carry our product, to show, show their audience. But what if you got a group of people to do it at the same time. How much more visible would your brand be? This is where we shift from the hobby to the next business level of sales, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. I'd only have a short amount of time, but I definitely wanna make sure that you take a moment to do the quiz. The quiz is designed to give you resources for where you are in business. So if you are a um, direct selling person, if you are uh, doing drop shipping, wholesaling, depending on how much you do in sales, you will get a resource catered to you. So that is uh, my path to profit. Let me make sure that I drop that in here because it's gonna be such an amazing thing for you to take part of. And um, you don't have to leave Facebook to do it. <laughs> um, it's definitely going to um, give you what you need. And then I'll follow up because as well with um, whenever you're scaling, you're gonna to need to take off some of the 27 hats, okay? 
as a mom of five myself and a business owner and, 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 we have a tendency as women, especially to wear a lot of hats. And so when we're shifting from hobby to business level, we also have to relinquish some control and relinquish some of the hats, okay? And so I definitely walk you through how to do that. Um, so you're gonna get that follow-up once you take the quiz as well, okay? Because getting help is essential, okay? It's essential to your sanity and it's essential to growth. I mean, how many people are running multi-million dollar businesses by themselves? I'll wait. <laughs> Not many. And so that question is, okay, well, when is it safe to hire an assistant? When is it, when is it a good idea budget-wise um, to get someone to come help me? If you're making your product by hand, you know, how do I scale from doing it myself to actually getting a team to do it? And is it cost effective? Or should I continue shipping by myself and, um, and saving money that way and using my time? Or should I have a third party do it for me? Or should I hire someone to come in and work with me? These are things that make me so excited <laughs> because they're decisions that um, will, will take your business to the next level that much faster or they can cripple you um, if you make the wrong one and you end up making more expenses for your business rather than more revenue. So this is definitely a balance that like a yin to the yang that I talked to you about. So, um, so definitely take the quiz. Um, that's going to give you what you need. And then also, it'll also show you where my Facebook group is for those selling physical products online, okay? So with that, I hope you enjoyed um, uh, this. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will definitely circle back to it. I'm actually about to hop into my Facebook group and talk about wholesaling, um, the wholesaling packets, what to include in them, and all that stuff with my five-minute training. So um, I will be hopping over there. I do short trainings on purpose because I want you to take this and implement it. So this is more of a, a conversation, uh, but inside my, my Get More Sales Academy and inside of my Facebook groups, I do short trainings that you just take what you learn and implement it immediately to get the results. All right. So with that, I hope you enjoy and have a wonderful Friday. And I hope, to be, hope you take this quiz and we'll be chatting soon. All right. Bye.